the last place I wanted to be was Frost Nippistan. This one's wife. The empowered speech of a loser. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. This one's wife believes that the speeches that she makes and the statements that she issues are sheer brilliance. Apart from a rump of idiotic thick as mince sugars, the rest of the world recognises that what she issues, whether it's in a statement or a speech, is a word salad with lashings of idiocy. That she takes a healthy dose of word salad, adds some plagiarism, throws in some fridge magnet platitudes, and delivers it in a supercilious and condescending tone. She believes that what she states is insightful, unique, and groundbreaking, because her narcissism tells her so. If she had a hint of self-awareness, she would recognise that what she comes out with is errant nonsense that doesn't really mean anything, often is hypocritical, and therefore would think, do you know what, I'm either going to hire somebody who can write speeches, or I just won't give them any longer, and I'll keep my head down. Naturally, she has no such self-awareness, and instead continues to offend the world with her own particular brand of special word salad. Do you recall back in 2021 when there was the Afghanistan crisis that she released a statement whereby she trotted out a load of pap by way of an attention-seeking word salad? She stated, as we all feel the many layers of pain, what? Due to the situation in Afghanistan, we're left speechless. Well, actually, no, you're not, because you're issuing a statement. As we all watch the growing humanitarian disaster in Haiti and the threat of it worsening after last weekend's earthquake, we are left heartbroken. And as we all witness the continuing global health crisis, exacerbated by new variants and constant misinformation, we are left scared. When any person or community suffers, a piece of each of us does so with them, whether we realise it or not. And though we are not meant to live in a state of suffering, we as a people are being conditioned to accept it. It's easy to find ourselves feeling powerless, but we can put our values into action together. Patronising, meaningless, grandiose and posturing. Once again, of course, she tells the world how it should behave whilst doing exactly the opposite. Word salady nonsense. The speech that she gave Bridgewater Hall in Manchester, all about her, as delegates sat there thinking, and I paid how much to attend this nonsense? All about what she had done in the past, about previous conferences, and then, of course, dropping in authenticity, stand in your truth. I mean, what the fuck does that mean, stand in your truth? Stand in dog shit, which would be preferable than listening to the bollocks that comes out of your mouth. But time and time again, the evidence shows that she would send a glass eye to sleep, that she just spouts this meaningless word salad, part of her grandiosity. The monologues that she engages in, she believes are brilliantly received. You might have watched the film American Psycho, and there's a particular part where Patrick Bateman is out for dinner with some of his friends, but also some more liberal, left-leaning friends. I think one of them is called Stash. If I recall correctly, Timothy Bryce makes a comment which results in the Liberals saying, hey, that's affects us. And he responds with, yeah, well, what do you think about all of the Sikhs killing loads of Israelis, showing a complete misunderstanding of the geopolitics of the world? Bateman jumps in, seeing it as an opportunity to make himself look good, as he states, well, we have to end apartheid for one and slow down the nuclear arms race. 
stop terrorism and world hunger. We have to provide food and shelter for the homeless and oppose racial discrimination and promote civil rights while also promoting equal rights for women. We have to encourage a return to traditional moral values. Most importantly, we have to promote general social concern and less materialism in young people. His hangers-on look at him with rapt admiration as he takes a sip from his drink and looks around with a smug appearance of, that was brilliant. Whilst she's no psychopath, but as a narcissist, this one's wife behaves in a similar way, delivering meaningless pap, believing it to be her authentic truth, and, wrapped in her world of delusion, clearly believes that what she says is meaningful, has resonance, and that people lap it up and think that it's wonderful. She glosses over the confused looks that she might receive, dismissing those individuals as not yet on board and struggling to understand the message. Those that have been placed in the audience, who have been paid to clap and holler at what she has stated, they, of course, provide her, unfortunately, with the validation that she is fantastic at what she does. And thus, this has created a state of mind within this one's wife, whereby she believes that each and every speech she gives ought to be committed to the annals of great speech writing, when in actual fact, she is fucking useless at it. And yet, this delusion persists, for Newsweek, reported by James Crawford Smith, tells us, this one's wife's empowered speech goes viral. I think we need, actually, to bring in the horn of ridicule at this juncture. To emphasise what bollocks it is. This one's wife has become the subject of a new viral video as a speech delivered before her marriage to Prince Harry on gender equality and female empowerment, hmm, two things that she talks about but doesn't actively demonstrate, has resurfaced on social media site TikTok. Women's advocacy has been a central part of this one's wife's philanthropic work throughout her adult life. Yes, she likes to talk about it, but women's advocacy. So, when was she standing up for Princess Charlotte when she bullied her? When was she standing up for her fellow at the time, Duchess Catherine, when she was unpleasant to her? Why is it that she's only got her head through life as a consequence of the men that she's jumped into bed with? Where's the female empowerment and all of that? Naturally, we know that she's a hypocrite and that her narcissism acquires the concept of women's advocacy, philanthropy, gender equality and female empowerment as shards to bolt into that facade by way of character trait acquisition. Apparently, this report tells us that those things are a core element of her public outreach as a working member of the royal family, save that she isn't, and again something she has continued to engage with since her split from the monarchy and moved to the United States in 2020. Really, the Duchess has received a number of awards, all purchased by her of course, from women's groups, including a Women of Vision Award from the Ms. Foundation for Women in 2023, which, of course, has faded into obscurity as it was overshadowed by the car chase that never was. One of this one's wife's most important women's advocacy speeches to date took place in 2015, well done on bringing up something from the past from eight or nine years ago, when, as an actress prior to her marriage to Prince Harry, she was an advocate for women's political participation with the United Nations Women Group, also known as UN Entity for Gender Equality and the Empowerment of Women. In this capacity, the future royal was invited to participate in a UN women-hosted event in New York City, celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Fourth World Conference on Women that took place in Beijing. This one's wife attended the event with her mother, Doria Ragland, and gave a speech in a lineup that also included former First Lady Hillary Clinton and then UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. Uploaded to TikTok by user Lady Francis 1997 on January the 17th, Footage from her speech has been seen and renewed interest 
gaining over 400,000 views in 48 hours. During the speech, and yes, here it comes again, this one's wife told an anecdote, which she has repeated several, only several, fucking loads of times since, describing how at the age of 11 she wrote to home product conglomerate Procter & Gamble to complain about sexist language used in one of their ads for dishwashing soap. Character trait acquisition, revision of history. Yada, 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 when I was 11, yada, 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 wrote a letter, yada, 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 boy said belonging kitchen, yada, yada, yada. Once again, the Procter & Gamble soap said story has been brought up. And this article resurrects that same old, tired, worn-out misrepresentation of what actually happened and other speeches that she's given in the past. The evidence shows she's an awful maker of speeches. Not only is what she talks about meaningless word salad, her delivery is tolerable, and she's boring. And yet, here we are, another article by the Supine Newsweek propping her up, suggesting, hey, look, there was a video about something she said from years ago that has gone viral. Everybody else needs to know about this because isn't she wonderful? She's philanthropic, involved in female empowerment and gender equality. Don't forget that. Well, actually, chorus is everybody. We do forget about that because she doesn't show any gender equality whatsoever. She leeches from men, uses men to get ahead, tramples on other women. Where's the female empowerment in all of that? She is no role model to anybody. She's a perpetual victim that talks about family whilst having nothing to do with a father and a two half-siblings and nothing to do with the royal in-laws. She's an individual that talks about the concept of authenticity, yet she's a complete fraud. She's an individual that talks about female empowerment but does actually nothing to further the cause of women but rather ensures that she's all right and shits on everybody else from her height. The fact is that the speeches that she gives are dull as ditch water and are those of a loser. But here is another example of the delusion of the narcissist and the necessity of ramming down our throats the fact that she believes herself to be all about gender equality, authenticity and female empowerment, causing everybody to shake their heads at the level of delusion that ensconces this woman. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.